I think it's quality. It just is pure, simply precision and quality. We get a lot of people that say we, they just like the, the, you know, the look of the Zeiss. One thing that camera guys always say, obviously we talk a lot and we're all into our gear, but they always say, get the lenses, invest in the glass. Glass is, is, is one constant and it's the one thing that you should really invest in and it, it's you know, going to see you for years. In terms of lenses, we put lenses into all sorts of devices, so Microsoft, Nokia phones uh, as was. We also do Logitech uh, webcams. Moving up from that, we do lenses to fit Sony cameras. We do lenses to fit Fuji cameras, SLR cameras, DSLR cameras. So we've got Nikon uh, as a native fit. We've got Canon as a native fit. These are manual focus lenses, so they're a traditional feel to them. Uh, we don't do autofocus lenses for those cameras. Um, You've got uh, our lenses moving on from that. We do the Compact Primes, which again are available in five different fits. So you can have them for PL mounted, uh, Canon, Nikon, uh, Sony E mount, uh, and Micro Four Thirds. Uh, we also do a range of zoom lenses, the compact zooms, in the cinema range, but not, not in the SLR range. We've just introduced recently some new lenses into the market, which are the Loxia lenses, uh, which are designed for the Sony Alpha, Alpha 7, 7R, 7S. Um, these are a manual focus lens, but superb quality, a traditional, what we would call a proper lens, manual focus, weather sealed, and to cover the full frame. And these are proving very, very popular with visitors, creating a lot of interest. There's something actually quite nice about the photographic lenses because of the small size of them. Don't get me wrong, of course cinema lenses are fantastic and that's what we would aspire to, but when you look at the price, the size, the manageability for the one person operator, yeah. it's a wonderful choice that the photographic lenses perform so high. We kind of take that on board with this lens for example, we have a, a very nice feature on here, which is a mechanical de-clicking of the lens. So with the turn of this screw, you can take the click stop out of the lens and it'll go from a, a photographic situation into a video situation with, with no click. And then you can re-click it back, which is a very neat solution for such as yourself. That would be uh, quite a thing. What separates a cinema lens from a photographic lens? Because you do get some incredibly high quality photographic lenses and people do use them for cinema. They do. I mean, obviously the, the DNA of a, an SLR lens is pretty much, you know, the DNA of a cinematic lens. But it's all about practicality, it's usability, as you would probably know out, out on set. You need something that you can interchange quickly, uh, so the, the, phys the physical form of the lens is uniform so you can swap out a lens very quickly you don't have to change follow focus etc the fact is you can still get stunning results with the photographic lens you can get exceptionally good results with a with a photographic lens you may want to cinemize it in some way you may want to adapt it maybe declick the lens so that you've got manual iris control put a gear on there maybe put a standard front so you can put a matte box on all that can be done when someone like myself looks at photographic lenses and cinema lenses, there's such a big difference in price. There is. So why is there such a big difference in price? And in the same question, other than the price difference, is there a big difference in the actual glass? Do you get a better result from the cinema glass than you will from the photographic glass? You will ultimately get a better quality from a cinematic point of view. All the lenses are colour matched, centred, they're much more usable. So you, you do get a really nice effect. And of course you can move up on to our Ultra Primes, our Master Primes, Master Anamorphics for example. We, we do quite a range. I have to say you guys seem to be 
quite innovative when it comes to these solutions. The CP2s, as you mentioned, you can put different mounts. You can use it for Nikon, you can use it for Canon. Just change the backs of the lens, if I'm correct? That's right, yes. The, the, the nice thing about our CP2 range is that it's very future-proofed. So you can be shooting with Sony uh, now, but if you wanted to change to the latest, greatest camera, which might be Canon at some point in the future, I know Canon would probably argue theirs is the latest and greatest, but whatever your preference, whatever your client's demanding, you can swap out the back of the lens, the mount itself, the interchangeable mount system as we call it, uh, very quickly, very easily, and that's end user doable. Um, and suddenly your investment in glass is safe and continuous. So it's a very future-proof way of, uh, of, of working. And the wonderful thing about good glass is it retains its value. It does, yes. You can shoot with glass for many years and sell it and still get back a very big proportion of the initial investment. And there's very few commodities in the world that even function That's anything right. like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a good investment. It is a good investment in terms of the output, in terms of the quality, and in terms of in the long term, if you do need to sell it and move it on for whatever reason, you will get a good proportion of your money back.